Hi everyone. Today I'll continue talking about the color and swatch panel, which are really important tools. First, let's go over the basics of using the color panel. When creating objects in Designer Persona, they consist of a fill color and a stroke color. You should learn more about these color modes, RGB, CMYK, and HSL, to better understand how they work and when to use each one. This knowledge is essential, especially if you're working in both digital and print media. In the color panel, you can choose your preferred color palette. I set the color picker mode to wheel. To switch the color, you can click the fill or stroke circles, or use the up and down arrow icon, or even press the X key. To swap the stroke and fill colors, use Shift plus X. You can also use the picker tool to sample colors from other objects. In Affinity Designer, when you use the picker in the color panel, you can click and hold, then drag to the color you want. Once you release the mouse, the color will be selected. You can then apply this color to either the stroke or fill without needing to switch to the color picker tool again. In the opacity bar, if you click it again, it changes to the noise option. Clicking again returns it to the regular opacity setting. Moving on to the swatch panel, this is where you store frequently used colors and save custom colors. There are several options to add a palette here but I won't go into all of them. For example, there are different types of swatches, document, which is the color used in the current file, global, which changes every instance of that color across your design, registration, a special color used for printing, and application, which are swatches saved for Affinity Designer specifically. When you create a palette, just select a color and click the Add Current Fill to Palette icon. Remember, if you create a document palette, it will only work within the document you're currently in. Right-click Delete Fill to remove the color from the palette. You can right-click on the object and select Add Colors to Swatches. Even if you choose any type of palette, you can still import or export it for future use. Yes, you can add gradient colors to the swatch palette. Just like regular colors. Another option is to create a palette from an image. Just choose how many colors you want, click Preview, and then hit Create. Alright, I think I've covered the basics of color and the swatch panel quite well. This is the basics for rough drawing. If you want more details, watch more videos on YouTube where people can explain it better than me.
I don't usually draw highly detailed cartoon characters in graphic design that often. My focus is more on helping you understand how the tools work in a simple and easy way. I understand that if you become skilled at using a certain program, it usually means that the program is good. And I completely agree with that. I've talked about AI before and how in the future, we might not need to draw like this anymore unless it's just for fun or relaxation. But for now, the technology is still evolving. Most of my videos focus on drawing, not so much on creating logos or text styles. In fact, using this program for drawing isn't always the easiest way. There are simpler methods out there, but I like to offer my viewers another approach. You might not always draw, but you can still benefit from learning to use these tools. This style of drawing may not look very natural in terms of blending colors and adding small details. But it works very well. There may be some limitations and some difficulties in my opinion. I think Affinity Designer has a free trial for 6 months, and they might release an update by the end of this year or early next year. I'm just trying to explain things in my own style so you can understand. There's still a lot more to learn, and when I get stuck, I also look to others who know more than me. That's why my videos are great for learning the basics, especially for beginners. My videos are meant as a guide. If you want more detailed information, there are definitely other YouTube videos that go deeper into the subject. If you're interested in learning more about this program, it's definitely worth exploring further. That's all for today's video. I hope you'll come back and check out the next one. Thanks for watching.